What's up and welcome to my final summer review for the Legion Pro 7i. This thing was very impressive today overall, in my opinion. We really put it through its paces, testing it in a bunch of different games and it actually did really, really well in basically every game, a couple of the games. We really had to turn the settings down. We'll go over those. Now I want you to know, I do not take sponsorships from companies unless I can be completely honest about the pros and cons of the products that I'm reviewing. So just know that I can give you my full and honest opinion about this Legion 7i. It's literally written in the sponsorship contract. That said, big shout out and thank you to Lenovo for sponsoring this episode and sending the Legion 7i powered by the Intel Core i7 14700HX over for review. Now there are links in the description and pinned comment down below if you'd like to pick up the Legion 7i. And if you do use the links in the description, I want you to know that helps support me as a content creator. So thank you very much. We'll be doing the same testing that we do every day here on Gizmo Slip Tech. And there is a full four hour live stream linked in the description down below as well if you want to see the full benchmarking and testing. There are a bunch of different configurations currently for the Legion 7i. Right now, the i7 version with the 4060 is what we are testing today. Costs about 1700. There's an i9 version with the 14900HX and the RTX 4070 for almost the same price. If you buy this today, be sure to buy the correct version because you get a big upgrade for the same price. The biggest pros and cons, biggest pros, Fairly thin for a fully powered, fully featured gaming laptop and very rigid build quality. The hinge goes nearly all the way back and the hinge is also very high quality. Feels super sturdy in the hands. Like look at how freaking solid this hinge is. You can still open it with one finger, no problem. And on top of that, it's a very like stiff hinge. Generally when you move it, I really like the hinge if you can't tell. Uh, one of my favorite hinges I've tested so far in 2024. Now, the actual quality of the materials feels really good in the hand. It feels really rigid generally with some flex near the center of the keyboard when the laptop is on a table. Touchpad realistically could be a little bit larger quite frankly. But other than that, it's glass, it tracks well, it clicks well, I do like it a lot. The perky RGB backlighting on the keyboard is fantastic. It looks really good, lots of different customizability around it, uh, lots of different modes you can use, it's very bright. Now there's no light bar, but this thing is still just really classy because of all of the aluminum finish on it and just the overall feel. The white overall design with the perky RGB and the brushed aluminum finish, I really like it. It's one of my favorite looking laptops for 2024, at least the white version is. Removing the bottom was fairly easy. Eight screws, regular Phillips head screwdriver on the small side. And overall, the internals, lots of upgradability. You got SODIMM slots for upgrading the RAM up to 96 gigs. You got two M.2s with one open, SK Hynix RAM and SK Hynix SSDs in here, both very fast with Dismark and Ada64 scoring above average and with good levels of performance. Cinebench R23 was off the charts for an i7. We scored almost 27,000, like 26.9K for our best single run. Now for multi runs for 10 minute scores, it was still over 21K and that was with performance mode. So it's kind of more of a neutered level of performance compared to the custom mode where you can get more like 23 and a half thousand nonstop if you want to push that. And that's without an undervolt. So that's very impressive CPU performance for the i7-14700HX. Now, unfortunately, there's only 16 gigs of RAM in here, but it is at least upgradable. So on the inside, we do have a heat pipe layout for cooling and two fan exhausts. We did see overall very good temperatures in different games, but when you did run it in CPU, only benchmarks and workloads, the temperatures do get quite hot running all the way up to the max thermal throttle temperatures. And then of course it comes down. Bloatware, there is McAfee. I had to remove that and it had some annoying pop-ups. So definitely remove that in my opinion, unless you wanna use it, that's fine too. If you decide to use it, there's nothing wrong with that, but I wish that Lenovo would not include it in the initial installation. The 
Ports on this are surprisingly good, especially for a thinner, more portability focused laptop. You got three total USB C's, with one of those being Thunderbolt 4, another one with 140 watt power delivery for USB C, uh, which is really good. DisplayPort 1.4 support on that one, two USB A's as well, one with always on charging, which is nice if you want to charge your phone when the laptop is turned off. You also have an HDMI 2.1, and unfortunately, you do not have an Ethernet port. You do have a headset combo port as well. And you have a full-size SD card reader on here. So great overall laptop for multimedia content creation on the go as long as you stay plugged in. Do not expect very good battery life when you are uh, pushing the CPU to the max. I ran one Cinebench R23 10 minute benchmarking run, probably runs a little bit longer than 10 minutes, but it drained the battery by over 25% in that time frame. So you're looking at only about an hour of nonstop maxing out the CPU on this laptop on the go. If you're in a web browsing situation, you optimize it fairly well. You're looking at about three to six hours, depending on how you optimize it, but probably more like four to five for most average users on the go. And then if you really optimize this thing with turning off the everything, turning the brightness down lower, really just doing like a typing in a Word document type situation, you might be able to push more like six to eight hours of battery life. So battery life on this machine is okay. Good enough for most college students, good enough for many business users, but it's not all day battery away from the wall, especially if you're looking to be productive when you're away from that wall outlet. So uh, take your power adapter with you. You do have that USB-C charging as well. So you can always utilize that if you need a small portable power adapter to take with you. Webcam was surprisingly good, especially for video mode and the microphone sounded pretty good in my opinion, for overall quality. The keyboard itself has an excellent layout and typing feel. I really liked that overall. The Lenovo Vantage software, everything is in a central dashboard. You have easy control to just about everything related to the laptop, including BIOS updates, all recorded locally. So that's really great. You can undervolt the CPU, you can overclock the GPU, you can set your battery conservation modes and control everything about your laptop in one location. So that's one of the main reasons I like Lenovo Vantage, plus the UI is centered on mainly one page. There's a few additional pages that you can jump between, but mainly everything is on a quick switch from one page that's easy to understand and easy to use. So Lenovo Vantage, definitely a giant thumbs up in my book. Display test. Now this, this unit comes with a 500 nits QHD plus 240 hertz refresh rate laptop display with 100% sRGB. And we did test it to show that percentage with my Spider 5 Elite test underrepresenting by about 7% relative to what it really is. So 93% sRGB translates to 100% sRGB and about 79% of the P3 color gamut. Overall, the display on this is plenty good enough for most gamers, but content creators will probably want the higher end 3.2K 100% DCI-P3 color gamut display. It's only a $25 upgrade on the Lenovo build page, but that is also a more expensive build area overall compared to the pre built systems that they're shipping out. So be sure to look for coupons if you do decide to go through the Lenovo website directly. Speaker test. These speakers were quite a bit quieter than most laptops out there. Unfortunately, the uh, speaker quality also was not that great. And so as a result, this is like a little bit above average speaker system in terms of quality, but the volume I would say was only about average. So I gave it about a 7.8 on my speaker rating levels. So, and that does seem a bit low considering that this laptop does cost a bit of a premium price relative to the specs that the laptop comes with. Fan noise testing, max fans about 57 to 58 decibels, which is quite loud. Performance mode, which gets you pretty much the full performance of the laptop 
came in right around 51 to 52 decibels, which is quite a nice blend of performance and fan noise. Now, balanced mode did neuter the GPU down to a lower wattage performance. So unfortunately, balanced mode is gonna sacrifice quite a bit of performance, but the fan noise was only around 47 decibels. Quiet mode does really neuter the GPU performance down to 55 watts, but it's also almost inaudible with only one decibel of additional noise generated from the fans on the laptop. This laptop comes with a nice blend of performance modes that definitely dramatically can affect your performance levels, but also can reduce the noise profile. If you're in a quiet environment like a business meeting and you still need to render a video, you can have a relatively quiet laptop. It doesn't have to be a jet engine right there in that business meeting, making for a rather embarrassing maybe uh, altercation with your boss or something, I don't know, or your professor. Let's talk Time Spy score. Over 11,000 with the GPU overclock enabled, which is really good for an RTX 4060. Over 17,000 for the CPU score is phenomenal for a gaming laptop, especially one as thin and light as this one. Apex Legends on low was 150 FPS approximately with very good 1% low performance. Response rate, thanks to the G-Sync enabled display, was fantastic. We also have Advanced Optimus allowing us to switch into integrated GPU only mode, which is definitely recommended if you're gonna try to maximize your battery life. There is also in the NVIDIA only mode, so that way your integrated GPU is not interrupting your gaming experience as you switch between games with the GPU switching in and out of integrated and NVIDIA graphics. Baldur's Gate 3, again, about 150 FPS at full resolution and settings on ultra settings with DLSS on quality. It's a fantastic Baldur's Gate 3 gaming experience. Counter-Strike 2, about 150 FPS with very high settings, up to 220 FPS, pretty much steady on low settings. So overall, very good gaming experience in Counter-Strike 2. Cyberpunk 2077 on ray tracing on ultra, DLSS on quality, frame generation enabled. We only got 45 FPS, which is very low for a frame generation enabled game. Theoretically, it's playable, but it's not gonna be a very good experience. So I would recommend turning off ray tracing, set DLSS to balanced, and then boom, uh, also, you want to turn the textures to medium, I believe, and then boom, you're going to have a great overall experience with over 100 FPS in Cyberpunk 2077. God of War, great gaming experience, great overall FPS. I mean, you're getting about 60 on Ultra and closer to 100 on original graphic settings. And original is probably the way I would play it. I do like to get over 90 FPS when I play God of War. Helldivers 2, only about 45 to 50 FPS on Ultra settings and up to about 60 FPS on Medium settings. It's still playable, but you might want to upscale more or lower the settings even more to get a more optimal frame rate. I mean, it is a slower paced shooter, so 60 FPS actually does feel pretty good as long as it's a very steady 1% low. It's up to you, but overall the gameplay experience is possible to have a good fun time blowing up some aliens and some robots. Hogwarts Legacy turning off ray tracing is pretty much required to have an excellent gameplay experience. Ultra with ray tracing got a 60 FPS and about 20 for our 1% low. It's possible, it's an enjoyable experience, but if you want a fluid, great gaming experience, turn off ray tracing, set textures to medium, set DLSS to balanced, and you're looking at about 100 FPS with 60 FPS for the 1% lows. Alluvium is just launching in open beta. Link in the description if you wanna play some Alluvium. Really fun game collecting creatures about anywhere from 60 to 100 fps depending on what you're doing what you're looking at uh very fluid gameplay and much more optimized now now overall there is still some stuttering that occurs especially when loading in new environments with this laptop that would be better if we had more ram and more vram especially since then we could set the textures and settings to higher than medium but overall, gameplay experience with the Legion 7i is still possible to have a fun experience with Alluvium. Witcher 3, turning off ray tracing is not required, but it's recommended because you're uh, not quite getting the 
optimal FPS, about 60 FPS with ray tracing and everything on set to ultra with frame gen and DLSS on quality. So ramping that up to a hundred plus just by turning off ray tracing really makes the Witcher 3 gaming experience better. Overall, can I recommend the Legion 7i? Yes, absolutely. This is a, just a super solid laptop. Now it's not the best bang for the buck machine out there, Definitely. Like it's an expensive machine for the specs you're getting, but you're getting amazing build quality. It's really rigid hinge. The display quality is good, whether you're getting the 2.5K or the 3.2K display and the overall thermals and the way the laptop's tuned, the control software, it's all very, very good. Now, if you do decide to get this through the links in the description, it does help support me as a content creator. So thank you so much for your support. And again, big shout out and thanks to Lenovo for sending this laptop for review. And thank you so much to everyone that tuned into this review and made it possible by supporting me, watching me, liking the content, subscribing, and coming back for more. We'll see you guys in the next review. Brandon out. Huzzah.